Just kidding, it's actually Saturday night, but I am going to show you how to do all the math problems that you're going to need to do for your math test on Tuesday. So this is chapter 10, and we are going to be looking at surface area and volume, and this is your chapter 10 test review. You want to make sure that you have lined paper out. Um, you want to make sure that you have a pencil, colored pencils, you're in a nice quiet location. Make sure at the top of that white paper that you write your name, date, and period, and that you also write that this is the chapter 10 test review, just like it says here. You're going to want to make sure that you're numbering your paper as well as I go through the problems. All right, let's get started with our first problem. Remember, you want to write down all of the problems as you see them. Just do your best to sketch the the pictures. That's not the most important thing as long as you're understanding how I'm doing it on screen. So as you can see, the problem we have here says the surface area of the pyramid below is 308.8 square centimeters. What is the slant height of the pyramid? So that means that this is a missing dimension problem where they gave you the surface area. So you want to first think, okay, what am I going to do with the surface area problem? Well, I usually always need to find the base for anything I do. So I'm going to go ahead and underline the base here. And you can see that we're missing, I'm not underlining the base, I'm sorry, outline the base. You can see that we're missing the height of that lateral face triangle, So, which is the, the slant height. So now I'm going to go ahead and find the area of my base, which is 64, because I know that I'm going to find the um, surface area by adding all of the separate base, I'm sorry, all of the separate faces, their areas together. So let's, we've went ahead and got our first face, which is going to be the base, and I wrote a number one there because I want to know that I've got I've had one taken care of. And that's out of one, two, three, four. It will be five because a square has four sides. So you have a lateral face coming up from each one of those. So you'll be looking for a total of five. So now after that, we're going to try and come up with our formula um, in our brain. We're going to think of exactly what we need to do. So for the surface area of this pyramid, which is a square pyramid, we're going to write surface area equals. It'll be the area of our base, which we did in blue. Okay. In fact, I might want to just color that in blue. <clears throat> So it will be the area of the base, which we found in blue, plus four times base times height divided by two. And it's because, again, we have four lateral faces. So on this next page here, I went ahead and you don't have to rewrite what I wrote. I just shrunk what we had on the last slide so we could start from there. We've got 308.8 that we're going to stick in there for surface area because they told us what the surface area is. Then we're going to take our 64 because that's what we got for the area of the base. And we're going to add it to four times eight, which is the base of that, um, the base of our triangle here. Whoops. So right there, I don't want you to be confused um, with the H because the eight is the base. And so then let me go ahead and do this too. Okay. So I went ahead and I erased the pink arrow because I think the pink arrow was a little um, misleading. So the pink arrow or the pink number here is going to count for the base of my triangle. And we also need to be solving for the height because now I'm going to use a green arrow. We don't know what the height is. And then we're going to go back to our formula, which is divided by two. Now in class, it was a little more complicated um, than it really needed to be. So I'm going to show you a shortcut. You already know how to cross simplify. So we're just going to go ahead and do that here so that we can make our problem a little easier to work with. So now we have divided out two from the bottom and the top. So our new equation is going to look like this. We've got 308.8 equals 64, because remember that was our blue 64, plus, you can't forget that plus sign, now you've got a 2 left up here at the top, so see that 2 that we had from cross simplifying, times the 8 right here that we have there, so 2 times 8 is going to give us 16h. Now what we have is going to be our two-step equation that we talked about in class over the last few days. So now what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're working PEMDAS in reverse. So we're going to subtract 64 from both sides because the idea is to get our variable alone. Make sure that we're lining up our decimal properly. Notice 64 was a whole number, so we need to make sure to line that up. And we get 244.8. So now I'm just going to rewrite my equation on a new screen. And actually, I didn't go over to a new screen. I just left it right here because I want to make sure that you can see everything together. I'm going to try and write a little smaller on some of the next slides. And now you have just a simple one-step equation. So we're going to show our work here. We've got 16 times h. So to undo that, we need to divide both sides by 16. Now, um, I went ahead and off in the top right, I'm going to do some of that division math. So now I go 16 goes into 24 once. We get 16. 
Okay, so as you can see, I went ahead and did the division here, and I found out that our final answer here is going to be up here at the top. Notice the 15.3 here. So we get that our surface area, not our surface area, sorry about that. We get that our height is going to be equal to 15.3, and in this case, it was centimeters. Remember, it's not centimeters squared. It's not centimeters cubed. It's definitely centimeter, just regular centimeters because it's just that slant height, so that missing value for H. Okay, so as I said before, just some light sketches for these different figures will be fine. There is only one problem on the test where you're going to have to identify the type of figure that this is from the net, but I do want to make sure that you know how to answer that problem because it's going to be a short little problem. All you need to do is look at the problem and name it. So we're just going to do a quick review here. So this first one, we can tell that this is going to be a triangular pyramid with because of the triangular base. So you can see that base will be right here, and then these three edges will come up. Now you can see that we have a triangular prism. I know that might look a little weird to you, but you can tell because you have these two triangular bases, and that's what they sit on. So if you just think about being having that put together. Okay, for this next one, you can tell that this is going to be a square pyramid because you have a square as your base, and then you have four triangles coming off of that. So if those four triangles come up, then you have your square pyramid. And so notice that you've got two words for each one of these. So there will not be two lines on the test, but I will expect that you'll be able to identify it correctly. So you can't just tell me pyramid. You would have to say square pyramid or triangular pyramid. So, or triangular prism or rectangular prism, which we're about to go through next. So, and actually I have in fact included another triangular prism right here. So I'm just gonna label that in red with TP. So we can say triangular prism, I guess. This one down here in the bottom left is going to be a cube. Notice how all these guys are perfect squares and you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is definitely gonna be a cube. This guy would be just one answer if you had to have this one. So this would be one of the exceptions. And then for this guy here, you should be able to tell that this is gonna be a rectangular prism. And that does it for our short review as far as the nets are concerned. All right, the next problem says a rectangular prism has a volume of 810 cubic meters. It has a length of 10 meters and a width of nine meters. What is the height of a prism? So I'm gonna try and go through these a little quicker for your review because it is a lengthier chapter. So the things you need to remember, this is a rectangular prism. You're looking at volume, 810. So remember, immediately I'm writing volume equals length times width times height so that I don't accidentally think about surface area. Then off to the side, I'm gonna write something where it says it has a length of 10 meters. I can write length equals 10, uh, width equals nine. And then it says, what is the height? So I'm solving for height. So now I can just plug that in so we get the following. Okay, so as you can see, we I did all the work there where we solved for the problem. I went ahead and did 10 times nine is 90. So you get a 10 equals 90 H. Divide both sides by 90 and you're left with H equals nine. And then the final answer should be H equals nine meters. Don't make these types of problems harder than they have to be. In fact, there we go. Yeah, that was number three, so this is four. Don't make these problems harder than they have to be. The surface area type problem with the rectangle, um, or the different rectangles, rather, I would totally, if I can do the math in my head, I would just do that. So eight times four gives me 32. See, I got that eight there, and I got the four there. And if I know that one's 32, then that guy's also 32. Then we've got, okay, see the six right here, and now the four that I'm pointing to here. So six times four is gonna give us 24. And then I just need to locate the other 24, which is right here. Because remember, since this is a rectangular prism, I've got um, two sides that are opposite of each other that are gonna have the same values. Then the last one we've got is the eight meters here, because this guy right here is eight meters this way. And then we've got six meters this way. So it's gonna be 48 and this guy will also be 48. So then since this is a surface area problem, we're just gonna add those together. And as you can see, I lined up all the figures up and down. I went ahead and added them all together, and I get a final value um, that our surface area here is gonna be 208, and it will be meters squared. Because remember, you're working with area, so it's square meters. All right, so this one's super duper easy, guys. This is just a plain old volume problem, and it's a rec plain old rectangular prism. So it's gonna be volume equals length times width times height. Let's go ahead and identify each one. Remember length, they said you could remember because it, it goes from left to right. 
width we can say goes from front to back so that's going to be my width over here and then the height of course goes from top to bottom so we can use uh, actually I'll use pink here for that one so it's pretty simple we're just going to go ahead and plug it in and solve okay and as you can see I plugged everything in I got a final surface area here of 336 so we would write our answer as I'm sorry not surface area ah, scratch that completely I got a final volume of 336 and it will be millimeters and it will be cubic millimeters with that three. Remember that's important because um, this is a volume problem. So you just wanna plug that stuff in, go ahead and do your show your work off to the side there and then circle or put a box around your answer. All right, this problem says a table decoration is in the shape of a triangular prism. So we're gonna underline that. The base has an area of 60 square inches. Oh, so that means the base, like the whole area of the base. Okay, so this is 60 square inches. It has a height of four inches. Find the volume, so height of four inches, of the decoration. So I need to think about a couple things. Number one, this is a triangular prism. Number two, this is a volume problem. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to think about what I need for volume. Volume equals area of the base times the height of the figure. So sorry, I'm, I think it cut me off somewhere. So again, volume equals the area of the base, which is big B, times the height of the prism itself. Now normally this is where we would go off to the side and go, okay, big B equals, but we're not gonna do that right now because they gave us the area of the base right here, which is 60. So we're just gonna go ahead and write V equals, then the area of the base they said was 60, and then they said it has a height of four inches. So then that means we're just gonna be able to solve our problem by saying that the volume is gonna be 240 and it will be inches cubed. So then you wanna put a box around your answer. Simple as that. Okay, this problem says that Joe wants to buy enough sand to fill a sandbox that is 30, 36 inches long, eight inches wide, and 10 inches tall. If one bag of sand contains 576 cubic inches, how many bags should he buy? Now, this problem's got a lot of different things you need to think about. First of all, it doesn't say find the volume or find the surface area. So the way that you determine which one it is is you have to think about what you're doing. So if I'm painting the outside of my house, then we're talking about surface area. But if I'm filling my aquarium with water, then we're talking about volume. So which would this be? Well, he's talking about filling in a sandbox. So we're talking about volume of a rectangular prism. So right away, I'm gonna go, okay, my formula for that's gonna be V equals LWH, okay? Then I'm gonna start plugging stuff in. The volume is gonna be equal to, they said that the length was 36, the width was eight, and the height is 10, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and calculate my volume first. Okay, so off to the side, I've done my math where you can see that I multiplied it all out and I got that the final volume here is going to be 2,880, but I'm not actually going to put that on my answer line yet. So you want to make sure very, very, pay very close attention to these types of problems because now it says if one bag contains 576 cubic inches, how many bags should he buy? So in order to know that, we need to take the total volume, which we just found was 2,880, and then we need to divide it into chunks of 576 and see how many it takes. And since this little division doesn't help us because there's the 576 is such a high number, we just need to kind of do the math in our head. So we have 576, not totally in our head. We need to pick a number is what I'm saying. We can try 576 times four, six times four is 24. So now I see that I'm at 2304. So it's probably more, more than likely 576 times five. So I'll go ahead and do that math. And as you can see, that math did check out. It's 2,880. So now I know that he needs to buy five bags to fill the sandbox. So you wanna make sure that that is your answer that you put on the line. If you put that the volume is 2,880 on the line, that's a totally wrong answer. Because remember, the question is how many bags should he buy? All right, next question. So this one is a surface area question, and this is a triangular pyramid. So we're always gonna attack the base first. So as you can see, I went ahead and drew the triangle. I expect for you to do the same, and you wanna write base area. You're only gonna have one base because it is a pyramid, but again, it's a triangular base. So we're gonna go ahead and 
plug in those numbers. Pardon me. Sorry about that. We're going to plug those numbers in and then we're going to do our multiplication. Once we all, so once we do all the multiplication and division, you can see I've done that out to the side. I'm just going to put a little box around this and I'm also going to name this number one. Notice I put a one in a circle around it. Remember the reason I do that is because that accounts for one of my faces. Then I, th then I want to think, okay, I've got a triangular base. So that means I'll have three lateral faces that are coming up from my base of a triangle. So I'm going to have a total of four faces. So now I need to find my lateral face area. So as you can see, I went ahead and set up lateral face. Then I wrote the two, three, and four up top to remind myself that these are all going to be the same. And so now I need to figure out what that lateral face, what those lateral face dimensions are. So I'm going to look, I'm looking at this part right there. I know I didn't draw that perfectly, but you can see here, don't get confused with that 4.3. You can see that the height of one of my faces right here is going to be seven. And you can also see that my base right here is five. So we're just going to plug that in five and seven and then divide it by two. All right. So now I get that the area for one of those lateral faces is going to be 17.5. So again, I can now tell that I'm going to add everything together. So I'll get 17.5, 17.5, 17.5, or you could have just multiplied it by three. And then you're also going to add that to 10.75, making very sure that you're super careful about your decimals. Okay, so after all the math is done, you've added everything up, you can see that your surface area is going to be a total of 63.25, and that's meters squared. Okay, number nine says, after purchasing a gift for a friend, you need to wrap it. What is the amount of wrapping paper it would take to wrap a gift box with a width of eight inches, a height of six inches, and a length of five inches? So the first thing that you want to do is probably um, highlight the dimensions here. So we've got a width of eight, height of six, and a length of five. But the next thing we need to do is really think about what type of problem this is. So we're going to be wrapping a gift. So we're talking about surface area. We're not talking about what size gift we can put in the box. We're talking about wrapping a gift. So that's going to be a surface area problem. And it says, um, what's the amount of wrapping paper? Hold on, friend. Now this particular problem, um, the other thing you want to see here is it says gift box. So that means we're going to be using the rectangular prism as our guide in our mind. So this particular problem works or lends itself best to the formula portion. So when we learn the formula for surface area, so a, a trick that you can use here is you want to first find out what your length, your width, and your height is. And then you want to write those off to the side. So notice they gave you the width first. So the length is actually five. It's over here at the very last piece. Your width is the eight and your height is the six. So now you're going to plug that into the formula. Now, if you can't remember what the formula is, you don't happen to have it in front of you, you can say, okay, the surface area is going to be equal to, you know that there are three separate parts. So it'll be two times, and it's got to be, you can do the length, oops, let me take, here we go, two times the length times the width, plus two times, and notice I'm just going length times width, length times height, plus, and then the only two that haven't been paired width and height. So it'll be two times width times height. Okay, so that's okay if you do it like that. That's not a problem at all. Then you just plug everything in and solve. So as you can see, I went ahead and plugged all of the dimensions in. We've gotten down to this last part, and now we're just going to add our, our each of the areas of the faces together. Okay, so now you can see your final answer here, and notice I've also done this in inches squared. All right, so for this problem, you can see that it's asking you for the surface area and the volume of the same problem. So you're going to use this quite a bit. Um, you're going to use, like, the different pieces of it. Now, also notice that the triangle is turned sideways. So this figure right here is going to be the base of your base. So this is the base of your triangle. Then this figure right over here that I'm going to underline in red, that's going to be the height of your triangle. Okay? And then this number over here that I'm going to highlight in pink this is going to be the height of your triangular prism. So this is the prism height. Okay, so you want to also label that as well. So remember, when finding surface area, we start with our formula, which is volume equals big B times H. And we're going to go ahead and, um, I'm sorry, I think I just said surface area and I meant volume. When we're finding volume, we do big B. Um, times H, and we also need to have a, a thing off to the side of formula for our big B. So that would be base times height divided by 2. So from here, you want to plug in and see what we know and how to solve it.
So as you can see, I've seen here that our base is gonna be six. So that's what we put in for big B. And then we multiply that by the time, um, we multiply that by the height of the prism, which like I said right here in pink, um, I just pointed to it in green, is gonna be the eight. So you're gonna get a final volume of 48 centimeters cubed. Now keep in mind, this was only one part of the problem. So now you wanna go on and you wanna look at this again. Okay, so now you wanna think about surface area. This is a triangular prism, so you have two bases that are congruent. So let's find the area of the base first. And actually, as soon as I said it out loud, I realized we already found the area of the base. It was six, so let's put that in. So as you can see, I went ahead and put that this is the area of our bases. So we have two of them, which is why I wrote the um, one and two there. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and erase on the diagram here so that I've got a little bit more room to write. Now the next thing, we've taken care of the two triangular bases. The next thing we wanna look at is this big rectangle on the bottom and go ahead and get the area for that. And again, the, finding the, the dimensions, the correct dimensions, is the most important part. So you can see that this side length right here, let me go ahead and erase everything so that I can show you one at a time. This side length right here is gonna be eight. So I'm gonna put an eight, oops. There we go, it helps if it's, um, if it's the same orientation that you're working on. So I'm gonna put an eight right here, and then we need to figure out what that side length is. Well, there's nothing over there listed, but if you look across the way at that five, that five indicates that right here is five. So that's exactly what we needed. So now I can say, okay, the area for that is gonna be 40. And I don't mind if you just throw that area right in there. So now I'm gonna erase on the screen again so that we can look at the next rectangle. And the next rectangle we're gonna tackle here is gonna be this little one right over here. Okay, that I just outlined in green. So I'll erase it because I want you to see me outline it. All right, so we're working on this little one. So that means we're gonna draw our little rectangle here, but we're gonna draw it just like we did the last one, sort of in the same orientation. So we know that this side length is a three right here, see that? And then we also know that this side length is an eight. So that means the area here is 24. Now our last little triangle that we need to deal with, I'll go ahead and do that in orange, and that is this top face right here. So you should be able to see me outline that in orange. Now I'm gonna erase it again so that you can see what I'm looking at to find the dimensions, because that's mostly the hardest part. So right here, we can see that they've given us four, so that's good. And I'm gonna just draw my weird little rectangle like this. They've given us the four centimeters right there. So now all we really need to find is this edge right here. Well, there's nothing there listed, but if you look across the way, you'll see that there's an eight centimeters there. So those two are gonna be the same, um, the same uh, dimension. So now we have eight times four is 32. So now to find the surface area of this problem, we just add all those areas up. Now, when I go to put them on here to add them up, you can't forget you have two faces here. So I kind of dropped the ball on that. Remember up here, we drew the one and the two that I just circled again. This could be our face three, face four, and face five right down here. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you don't forget that you've gotta add those two sixes there. Then you have a 40 from right here, 24 from right here, and 32 from right here. So now that you add all those up, you get a total um, surface area of 108. So your final answer is surface area equals 108 centimeters squared. Now you wanna make sure that you have that squared correct as well, because remember, you're not looking for volume on this side of the problem. But notice in the green on the left side of the problem, you did put the cubed because it was volume. All right, so this problem says a pyramid has all sides as equilateral triangles. So that's really, really important because that means that even the base of the pyramid is an equilateral triangle. So it looks like this. I've got my base, and then off of my base, I have three perfectly equal um, other triangles. So as you can see, I've got a total of four triangles that are all the same dimensions. So I just need to find the area of one of them so that I can um, multiply it by four. So since they ha said that they were equilateral, and right here it says each side length is four centimeters, that means all of the lines in here are four. The only thing that's different is how far it goes up, the slant height itself and that's seven. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we would plug that in. So now you can see I went ahead and I plugged it in. I got four centimeters for the base, seven for the slant height, and then we're gonna plug that into the formula, divide by two. We're gonna cross simplify here, we get one and two. So we're gonna get that one face has a total area of 14, 
and I believe it's 14 centimeters. But remember, we have four of those. So we're gonna find the surface area by multiplying four times 14. So now we went ahead and took our the area of our base and we are gonna multiply it by four because there are one, two, three, four different triangles and actually different's not the right word. There are four equilateral triangles. So now we're gonna multiply that out and you can see that multiplication just above me. And so it says, Sat or not above me, above the problem, surface area is going to be equal to 56 centimeters squared. So you want to make sure that you put a box or a bubble around that. All right, so now my very last slide, yay, you made it to the end, is this cute little kid, and it, that's what he looks like at the last five minutes of his exam. So hopefully that's not what you look like when you have your last five minutes. Hopefully you're calm as a cucumber because you know you got them all right. Good luck, and I'll see you on Tuesday.